Hey everybody! Welcome. We are Folks Community Church. You might be watching on a computer or on a phone. But wherever you are, we're glad you're here. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to Fos Community Church. My name is Mike Arvin, and I'm so glad you have chosen to worship with us today. I want to let you know a little bit about Fos. Go online to foschurch.com or download the Fos Community Church app, and everything you need to know about events and programs for kids, teens, small groups, you can find all of that online. While you're there, take a moment and complete the Connect form. That is your first step to learning about your next steps with Fos Community Church. Also, if God has laid it on your heart to give and support the ministries of FOS, you can do that online as well. You can also give right here from the online platform while you're watching, 
or you can also mail in a check. But all of that information is laid out on the web and on the app, and we just always encourage you to seek God in your giving. want to wish you and your family a Merry Christmas, and thank you for joining us today. Hi, my name is Meredith Lewis, and I wanted to welcome you in to our second week of Advent. Um, last week, we lit the hope candle and we talked about hope. Um, this week, we're going to be lighting the joy candle, and Julie Fusen is going to share with us a message about joy. And just like last week, we're going to watch a video here in a minute of a family um, bringing this idea of Advent into their homes, this idea of these four characteristics that we um, have amidst the anticipation of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And on Christmas Eve, we will light the Jesus candle or the Christ candle. Um, it's a super, super sweet family time that can be a part of your home too. And I hope that you're choosing to do that this season. One way you can do that is this. Um, we have the opportunity, just like many years past, to be a part of the Christmas Angel Tree at Centerfield Elementary. We have 25 families who have um, called on us to help them find a little bit of this joy this Christmas. And we are adopting those angels. Several, there's about 45 or 50 kids represented in that mix. And we are going to adopt those kids and bring them some joy on Christmas morning. If you would like to be a part of that, check out the email in your inbox today and just choose one of those angels and bring the gifts and all the instructions are there. And I promise you, if you involve your kids in the process, you involve your family, you just do all that you can to um, really experience that together. I promise you this idea of joy, hope, love, peace, all of those things are gonna to begin to come together in a greater way. Now, um, before we get into uh, the video that we're gonna watch, I wanted to light the candle. And I'm super excited about the message Julie is gonna be sharing with us today. If any church, if any person has a reason to not find joy this Christmas season, it's Julie Fusen. it's Fos Community Church. But somehow, somehow, we can do it because we know the joy is a choice. And joy comes from the love that we have from our incredible Savior who died on a cross for us. So today, we light the joy candle. Oh my goodness, there we go. Father, thank you. Thank you for joy amidst the pain, amidst the hard, when things are going great, Father, you are always providing joy and we are grateful for it. We ask that you be with Julie today as she gives us the message, that you um, speak through her and that you um, speak to our hearts, that we can take what we learned today and we can walk it right out into this world, into this season, um, whatever way we can and then we can show your joy for all the world. God, we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh no, I've got it here. Okay, but remember, no one has heard from God for hundreds of years since Isaiah. At least, that's what we know about it. Right, and then, out of nowhere, God sends the angel Gabriel to an ordinary girl named Mary, and he says, Do not be afraid, Mary. God is very pleased with you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You must call him Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the Son of the Most High God. He will rule forever over his people, and that kingdom will never end. You would have flipped out. Well, yeah. Who wouldn't? 
<laughs> All right, girls. Can we finish? Okay. So then Mary asks, How can this happen? I'm not even married yet. And Gabriel says, The Holy Spirit will make this happen. Your relative Elizabeth will have a child, even though she is old. That's because what God says will always come true. And Mary says, I serve the Lord. May it happen to me just as you said it would. She just goes with it? No way. Yeah, I bet she asked way more questions than Luke records here. But somehow, she chooses not to let this crazy, unexpected thing send her into a tailspin. That's what real joy looks like. Wait, I want to do it. <laughs> On the count of three. One, two, two three. three. You are gonna blow those out as soon as we hang up, right? It probably helps with the dirty laundry smell. I'm not gonna burn down the dorm, I promise. Okay.
Good morning. I come to you today. Um, I want to talk to you about the next theme of Advent, which is joy. I've entitled this talk today, um, sermon, as you would say, really more of a conversation. Um, but I've entitled it Finding Joy, Admit, Finding Joy Admits Grief. And I just come to you. I've written a lot of thoughts down, so it's going to be kind of like that I'm, I'm having a conversation, but I'm going to be referring a lot to my notes just because um, I poured a lot of just my own um, thoughts and feelings over the last several months and the journey that we've all been on. I come to you as Jeff's wife, as co-founder of Fos Community Church, and I want to say that, you know, we're going to be okay. Jeff would have wanted us to continue to live. He would want us to carry the mission forward of Fos Community Church, and I'm going to mention that at the end, but, but today I just want to come and share with you a little bit about how do we find joy amidst very heavy grief and loss. And I know we all come to uh, this as um, at different places. And it's hard because 2020 has been such a hard year, unprecedented year. But I want to tell you that there is hope and joy. And that's all what it, the Christmas story was about. The Christmas story is all about God's gift of sending his son, Jesus, to the world. Jesus was the light of the world, bringing restoration to a darkened world. This story came through um, last week. Laura talked about hope. Um, the people of Israel were looking for the Messiah and they talked about, and, they, and it was such a dark time and they were like, when is this Messiah gonna come? And it's not what they expected. They wanted the Messiah to come in on a big, I guess a white horse to rescue them, but God chose a very different story. Again, um, I wanna begin back in the Old Testament and in Isaiah, and it says, Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord the God himself is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Again, the next candle of Advent is joy. True joy comes from rising above anything we face, above all of our circumstances, where they're happy, sad, um, grief, loss, circumstances in life sometimes that come to us that were totally unexpected. But we need to put our total faith in Jesus, the Son of the living God who gave Jesus to us in a baby, and that's what we celebrate at Christmas time. In Luke 2, chapter 10 and 11, it says, But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all people. For today in the city of David, there is born to you a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Have you ever thought about the Christmas story in real life, peeled it back and looked at, the, looked at the characters, looked at the real people of the Christmas story? This story is very unusual. And I think I've missed the heart at times. Look at Mary, her life, yes, was blessed because she was carrying the Son of God, but it was totally blown apart. Can you imagine how alone probably she felt at times because a lot of people probably were talking about her and thinking, oh my gosh, she's pregnant. But it's not really what she was expecting, was it? Joseph had chosen Mary to be his wife, but now she was pregnant. So can you imagine what it felt like for him? The shepherds, lowly uh, as they were, they were chosen first to hear about this good news given by the angels. And then, of course, Jesus coming as a baby to the world, coming as our Savior. But he was coming not only as divine, but human. He was going to feel all the things we as humans feel. Can you imagine as he lived his life and knowing his ultimate journey of suffering and pain on the cross? But you know what? I believe that they all had joy amidst all the things that they went through. But how can that be? You know, again, today is not necessarily a sermon. Um, it's just a conversation from me, Julie, Jeff's wife, co-founder of Fos Community Church. But I wanna come to you in a realness and share just with you how I have 
try to find joy amidst the ickiness and the horrible journey that I find myself on and that we find as folks community church on. There's a lot of good things going on, but this is just so unprecedented. I'm wondering, you know, when Jeff passed away, I just kept thinking, can I really do this? I'm just filled with all kinds of emotions. Can I really walk this journey? Why, God, am I on this journey? Why me? Why now? And I want to say, you know, we all find ourselves on sometimes some type of a journey that sometimes we didn't expect to be on. Um, The last couple of weeks, um, you know, coming through Thanksgiving, And then really the week before that, um, Jeff and I would have been married for 33 years on November 21st. A lot of sad times, but you know what? God did fill my life with a lot of beautiful things. So I really think that joy sometimes, you can find true joy sometimes amidst terrible pain. Um, What I would like to do now is I want to kind of share with you kind of some of the things that have happened over the last four months. I can't believe it's been four months. Uh, Jeff died on August 1st, 2020. Um, We are now in December, but I kind of wanted to share with you some things that I have learned along the way and then how God has spoke to me. You know, when Jeff went in the hospital, um, you know, I was very uh, anxious and fearful, and I know that was first several days we uh, Jeff and I talked on the phone a lot um, there, there came a point where I could not talk to Jeff I could only send him text messages and he could listen to those and then there was a point that we didn't have any communication at all but I remember asking him when we um, that Saturday morning he went in the hospital Thursday night but that Saturday morning I remember asking him Jeff how am I gonna you know how I was thinking about me like how am I gonna get through this you know I mean I just you know miss you so much and I don't like it that we can't see each other. Um, But he just said, you know what, Julie, I'm going to tell you right now that you need to focus, meditate on the scriptures because true focus on the scriptures, you know where the source is coming from. And it's that from God himself. God's word is what he gave us that we can navigate this life. And so uh, I have to say that over these last several months, that's what I have done. Probably more than any time in my life. Um, You know, unfortunately, sometimes I think we kind of depend on other people. Uh, Sometimes for our spirituality, um, we get kind of easy, you know, we kind of think about um, it's just too easy. And I I know Jeff was such a strong presence in my life. Sometimes maybe I didn't go to the scripture enough because I depended totally on Jeff. Um, But one practical thing that that I, I remember doing from the very beginning is that I went specifically to something that was easy and it was the Bible app, the YouVersion Bible app. And for those of that don't know what that is, it's an app you can download on your phone and it has scripture, um, you know, it has one scripture verse that they focus on a day. It has different plans and things that you can download, but I just wanted something simple. And so I began to look at that Bible app every morning. In fact, it became my source of comfort during that time. It, um, Really, I believe that God put those specific scriptures for me on certain days. And because of that, I wanted to share a few of those with you. And I believe that God orchestrates a lot of things. Uh, Sometimes I know uh, my daughter Evelyn and I, sometimes we talk about coincidence, but she doesn't ever believe that it's just a coincidence. And uh, we used to say it's God incidents because we feel like that God's orchestrating things in your life to speak to you. So I thought I would read a few of those scriptures to you. Um, One of the early scriptures from very on was, it came from Isaiah 54.10. And I'm going to read that. In fact, I'm going to put my glasses on right now so I can actually see it a little bit better. And it says, Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. And I thought, you know, as I read that scripture that morning, I thought, you know what? The mountains have been shaken. The hills have been removed. 
things have crumbled. But you know what? God's love has not gone away. It will not be shaken. It will always be there. So I thought that was very... Um, I'd like to share, too, um, just a very short story um, that I had an opportunity um, to do a devotion um, for the cross-country train for Odell County High School. And I know it was interesting. God orchestrated just a meeting with the coach, uh, Kurt Thomas. Uh, actually had gone to see um, my, our, our, our neighbor, who's kind of like my son, Nick, Nicholas Brown. He was running uh, regionals at Oldham County High School. Uh, it's normally um, held in Louisville, but I was there that day, ran into Kurt, and Kurt was like, Julie, he said, I've been thinking, you know, Jeff, every year before the state meet um, and had been giving the devotion for the cross country team, and that's next week. And he said, I just don't know. He said, I thought about reaching out to one of your staff at FOS. And I don't know, I, God just stirred upon my heart that morning to say to Kurt, well, what if I do that? Um, because, you know, our son Joshua, one who's at Oldham County High School, he ran cross country, and that's really how he, we got connected for Jeff was, was very instrumental in the, with the cross country team and leading devotions along the way. But, you know, Josh graduated in 2015, but Kurt was thinking, you know, had called Jeff, and he had done that year after year. And you know what? As hard it was for me to step out of my comfort zone and do that, um, I did that. But what was real interesting along the way, I thought about all week about what I felt like God was leading on my heart. And it was actually um, uh, Philippians 4, because I had been using that a lot. One of those verses about do not be anxious about anything and uh, finding true peace. And, and Philippians 4 has always been a very strong um, chapter in my life that I go to a lot. And um, I chose to kind of focus on that. And then, um, you know, as I was preparing the night before, putting it all together and writing it down, um, I opened up the, the, the YouVersion app that night and I looked at the scripture and I noticed, because I was a little bit anxious thinking, can I really do this? M one of my life verses that I wrote on almost all my cards that I s give to people was ex that exact scripture. It comes from Psalms 27.1 and it says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is a stronghold of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? And I'm like, God, thank you for that. Thank you that you walk with me and you are, you are going to walk with me. And I actually did that. The next morning, I didn't open the U app or, or the version app till that evening. And it was real interesting. The scripture that I started off with that day to talk to the cross country uh, team came from Philippians. It was Philippians 4.13. I actually focused on Philippians, but I talked about how, you know, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. We, you know, we know that scripture, but it's buried within Philippians 4. But I pulled it up after I had talked to them that night, I mean that afternoon, and then I get home that night and I pull that up and guess what was the scripture? Philippians 4.13. And I thought, you know, God, you know, I know people write this, but it, it felt like that God was talking right to me. And it gave me the courage to, to just to keep moving forward, to taking day by day, because I knew God was with me. I would encourage you, if you haven't, again, to check out the YouVersion app. You can download it on your phone or your computer. Um, but it's just been so helpful to me. And it's a very simple way for you to just have a scripture each day um, to focus on and they even have a place at the top where it says it's it has a story which basically they connect the scripture with the devotion as well as a um, someone giving kind of a synopsis of what that scripture means to them but I would encourage you to check that out that's really been so beneficial to me another thing um, that has helped me amidst the grief in this journey so far to find joy um, was to uh, start reading a couple of books. Um, as you all know that Jeff was an avid reader and was often had many series um, coming from books. Yes, of course, the Bible, but he also connected uh, with real life application with some things that people were dealing with. Um, but my daughter Evelyn gave me the book, um, It's Not Supposed to Be This Way by Lisa. 
Kirkus. Um, and in, in the beginning of the book, um, I've, I've just kind of got through the first several chapters, but in the beginning of the book, Jesus, uh, you know, she starts with the Garden of Eden. And you know, it's perfect in the beginning, but then it wasn't because sin came in and then, it, then life, you know, became not perfect. Um, and it introduced human life and all of its frailty in the world. You know, uh, we really are living east of Eden because true Eden is heaven and that is, that is our, our home. You know, G Jeff is now living in heaven uh, with Jesus our Savior. And so he is in Eden, but we are east of Eden. And you know, in Genesis, in that first Garden of Eden, um, it was perfect, like I said. But now, east of Eden, life is not perfect enters all kinds of feelings and suffering and pain. Yes, joy, yes, uh, feelings of happiness and those kind of things, but life is hard in all of its frailty and the things that we face every day. And we find ourselves sometimes on journeys that we don't wanna be on. But she points to, at the end, you've got the beginning of the Bible in Eden, but at the end, after the story of God, at the end in Revelation, it talks about, it becomes perfect again, and it gives us a perfect example of what really heaven is all about. And I wanna read from Revelation 21, three through five. It says, I heard, a loud, I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old things have passed away. He who, is seated on the, who, he who is seated on the throne said, I am make, making everything new. You know, the harsh realities of life are not the end, but rather we are in this temporary middle space as she talks about, Lisa talks in her book. She says, we have to wrestle here on this earth and deal with the honest feelings of despair, frustration, sadness, grief, loss. These feelings really are what make us human, but we must not let them hold on to us and hold us hot, hostage. Yes, we need to feel them, but we must move forward by letting our faith lead the way. God will make everything new. We must find hope amidst the ickiness hard sometimes that we face you know, in the chapter, and I've got it up here, but chapter two, Lisa um, talks about um, in, in Genesis, she's she referring back to the garden. She says, then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of his breath of life. And the man became a living being. Dust here represents the shatteredness. Have you ever tried to create anything from dust? But God created something from dust. He created us. But you know what? The dust was really the death of our normal life. The shattered dreams of what I had planned for the next journey ahead are now unrecognizable. They are as dust. And you can't glue dust back together. I think we often think about God, take all this and glue it back together. Make it better. Make it. Don't make me walk this path. But Lisa says, what if fixing, editing, and repairing, what if it isn't at all what God had in mind for us in that shattering? What if it God's desire to make something completely new? Right now, on this side of eternity, the dust is the basic ingredient with such great potential for new life. Dust doesn't have to signify the end. It is often what must be present for the new to begin. We came from dust and we will return to dust when we die. But those who believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord of, the li of their lives, it isn't the end, but it's the beginning of life in heaven, the ultimate new. Really death is just the passageway. And Jesus says, I am the resurrection and I am the life. And he is the true meaning of life. But what about the pain that I am now on, that we all are on? 
Would I choose it? Absolutely not. A life that is unglueable and is like dust, but God promises that he will be with us and he will make old things new and we must become new. Dead things come to life, good from evil, darkness turning to light. If I want his promises, I must trust his process. God isn't going to forsake me. He will walk with me and help remake me. Lisa writes again, what if disappointment is really the exact appointment our soul needs to radically encounter God? I wanna be first to say I haven't arrived at this at all and I don't think I ever will. But this journey, it's so hard at times and almost unbearable, but I am not done. You are not done. I remember texting a dear friend a couple days after Jeff passed away and her husband had died a, a year before that. And I said, gosh, how can you do this? I mean, how, how do you get through this? And she said, you know what? And she gave me a few other things, but she said, it was my faith or it is my faith, friendly, family and friends. Faith, family and friends. That's how you get through this life east of Eden. And I pray that you have your faith and your family and your friends, but really that's where ultimate joy is going to flow, particularly in the grief that sometimes we, we um, experience as we walk on this path. And that is so true. That is so true. Another book um, that has been instrumental um, in this journey these last four months was also given to me by Evelyn. But it really, it first became, it first came to me, she had sent me a podcast. She sent, she texted me a podcast. She said, Mom, I really think this would help you. And I'm just going to briefly mention this podcast, um, but it, but it is by a Holocaust survivor. Her name is Edith Edgar and um, Maria.com, I'm thinking, she, she, she interviewed her and it was the podcast. But when I listened to that, I was like, man, it really spoke to me because it kind of, put me kind of in her shoes, but also just how do you, how do you survive something so unimaginable? And she just said, you know, we all, we all, um, we all experience pain. We all experience suffering, but it's what we do with that pain and suffering and how do we live our lives? Um, she's written this book called The Gift, and I would highly recommend that you get this book. Um, but anyway, the podcast, she talked a little bit about her experience in Auschwitz. Um, she lost her parents. Uh, she and her sister actually were in Auschwitz. Um, but she actually, when she came out of Auschwitz, you know, she had a lot of anger and different things and worked it, but she ended up becoming a therapist. Um, and then um, through her life, uh, she's now 92 years old. And it, even in her 70s, she, I think, went into the hospital at one time, and she even thought about, you know, my life was over. She was ready to be over. She actually wanted her life to be over um, because she thought I'd live my life, and she was struggling somewhat. Um, but she ended up surviving the hospital and coming out, and she ended up, you know, she's still living right now. Um, but she wrote her first book at 90. And she often thought, what if, you know, what if I'd given up in the hospital? What if I'd passed away? I mean, think about those 20 years. and. I think it gave me perspective to think, how do we go from the experiences that we have if we look at them as new opportunities to give everything we have? And anyway, she entitled her book, The Gift. And in The Gift, she highlights how that our darkest moments can be our greatest teacher. It's not what happens to us that matters most, but what we choose to do with it. We all face suffering, sadness, loss, fear, anxiety, failure, brokenness. 2020, but we all have a choice to give in or to live every moment as a gift. Life is a gift. What will I choose? I choose joy. I choose joy. I choose joy, no matter how hard sometimes it is, and pass it on. Last Saturday, Saturday morning, I kind of want to conclude close with this but last Saturday morning uh, some of my family was coming for Thanksgiving 
and really the mornings are the hardest time for me. Early morning, about five o'clock in the morning, a lot of times I'll wake up and then thoughts will come rushing in and I think about, oh gosh, you know, how am I gonna do this? I start thinking about all the things that I have to do or even, you know, next week, next month and all these things that, how am I gonna do this? And I reached over, grabbed my phone, pulled the version app out and the verses that day, November 28th, 2020 were, came from number six, 24 through 26. It says, may, may the Lord bless you, take care of you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. And really th the story that day taught me, you know, that was a blessing that the Lord had asked Aaron and Moses to pray over the people of Israel. It really was about God is for you. And I, as I listened to the devotion, the perspective that they shared on that open story, I never thought about. They said the blessing, really, we think of blessing as, as maybe monetary or different things that we receive. But they talked about really the blessing was that it was actually God's presence. God is for you in midst of chaos, in midst of anything that we face. In the face of fear, in spite of difficulty, God is with us. Our faith can be unshaken. Our hope can be anchored. Our future is secure. Why? Because you and I are dearly loved by our Heavenly Father. And His heart is to bless us. In every season, even those of loss and uncertainty, I am thankful that we have His Word to remind us that God is faithful and He is present. I want to say one more scripture because I think it's important for you to hear how God is speaking to me and hopefully speaking to you through my words. Even this Thursday, I was kind of getting a little anxious about even standing before you talking to you today because I, I, again, my gift more is in singing and doing maybe short little talks or whatever, but not presenting a whole sermon to you. And really, again, it's just a conversation that I wanna have. But Thursday morning when I woke up, again, those thoughts were coming through and I reached out and I saw Isaiah 43 too. And guess what it said? It says, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. God's message to me is that I am not alone. God's message to you, you are not alone. One of the greatest reminders that we have, often you hear of this, and most of the time it's a very comforting scripture. We hear it most of the time at funerals is Psalm 23. But I think the theme of that, of Psalm 23, we think about it at death, but I think about God is with us, walking with us. Surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. God is going to walk with us, and I pray that you will know that. As I finish today, I loop back to the Christmas story. The angel told those shepherds, do not be afraid. I bring you news of great joy. The gift of Jesus is coming to us. He's coming to us today and changing us forever. That's the real gift of Christmas. May the gift of Jesus produce joy from you within you today. Joy no matter what. See it all around. And I pray that that will be your joy, the gift of Jesus. Father, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray right now. Lord, when I'm feeling anxious, please draw me near to you. As you encourage me, help me to encourage others who are struggling with fear and anxiety. Use my struggles and journey to bring hope to others that are struggling to find true joy. No matter what, please remind us that you are in control of everything. Help us to have strength to walk each day. The strength is not on our own power, but God's power through us. Circumstances in life change like the seasons, but no matter what, we can place our hope and trust in what doesn't change. You bring life to us, and it's the most important gift of all time. Thank you. Thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. 
that we may live forever with you. Amen. Community Church, I have a one last message. You know, God's light changes everything and no darkness can ever put out the light of God through Jesus Christ. We are to be the light bearers to this world. I want you to share the light that we have to others. This is our mission and this is going to bring glory to God. And you know what? Jeff's legacy will live on through each of you and through me, my kids. Jeff's last series in June was about light, of course. You know, really, folks, that's what it means, light. And our response to all that was going on, you know, we had the pandemic, we had then the protest, but he was like, you know, our response should be lighted up, baby. And I wanna say to you, our response to this world the message of Jesus that came in a little baby is to light this world up so that it will be so bright that people will be drawn to Jesus. I want to encourage you to share the light to this community, to our world, and in everything that you do. I want you to share the joy that we have and rise above our circumstances and share this message of Jesus. Be a blessing 
not only through our gifts, but also be a blessing through the presence of the people that we need to reach. Thank you so much. And I love you and I care for you. And we are going to get through this. And um, Jesus loves you too. And Jeff would want us to keep carrying forward the mission of Foast Community Church. Thank you so much for joining us today for worship. It's our prayer that you experience joy during this second week of Advent. And be sure to watch your email this afternoon for more information about Angel Tree and how you can get involved in that. And remember, if you're not getting emails from us, go online and complete that Connect form. We will see you back here next week where Brandon will have a message for us on the third week of Advent, Love. Thank you, everybody. Have a great week.